Let's see where this goes. Reminding you, this is a best of three series. So, map bands go ban, ban, pick, pick, ban, ban, and then the cider is your final admin pick. So, Villa Bank will be the first to remove. We start on Coastline. Second is Cafe Dostoevsky, and our decider is on Consulate. So, pretty cool to start off here with. We'll get two technical maps. We'll look at it with Cafe Dostoevsky and Consulate, Oldie and Consulate, especially. Coastline, very varied handles i think it handles very very well for the sonics as well overall the sonics in this matchup have an advantage given the fact that you account for their new roster it didn't have the time to shine because it, it, there was a lot of things involved in that whole debacle in the second half of the season and it takes time to integrate two players that we know are great and can fit well with the roster it just takes some time so today might be the time to shine it has to be if you ask me. I mean, so the Sonics started doing really well towards the yeah. end. Like, if we, we, we if we look at their record, I mean, they're uh, beating SSG. They're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with TSM. Losing, but going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And then they beat Rogue in the uh, third-to-last play day. So, it's, you know, there's a there's been a lot of good things for Sonics. What do you guys think? Who's going to win this? Uh, is it going to be the new blood? Is it going to be Obey? Oh, okay. This is close. 51% hmm. to Obey Alliance. That's interesting. Over Sonics 49. So, so, I mean, of course, I'd like to mention that Obey Alliance is, you know, it's not the, the uh, some might know the old Obey, like way back, like we had Bosco, my man, Skies, Adam, and, and Benji. That's like, you know, look far back, and that's their roster. Some might recognize Obey from that roster. Yep. This is new. Uh, you might have seen the names in the in the lineup when we're leading in there. It's it's Fozo, Abunai, Callout, Forest, and Agrixer. So these are different players, and. I think they definitely have something to prove. Yes, they are coming in here as, I believe, the top seed out of Challenger League, which is pretty impressive. They are, yes, indeed. Um, but there is still something to actually like show us to suggest that they're going to be winning in that community vote. I, I'd reserve judgment if I were you. Now, judgment be done. Let's move on into the actual match. We've got Lion Band right off the bat here by the Sonics. They want none of that. We saw some of that in the European relegations. And we're seeing it now in North American. Nomad banned out as well. This one by Obey. Okay, I like the bands here on the attacking side. The defensive bands I expect to be very standard. This will probably be a Mira. If it's not, that is surprising. And we'll see a very interesting coastline. There you go, Mira banned. Uh, so defensive bands standard. Nothing too crazy. On the attack, Lion is becoming more frequently banned by some people as of late. I think we always see a different meta in the bands, especially when we're going into a LAN event. And we're getting close to Japan. We might be seeing some hinting at what's going to happen at Japan by what we're seeing on the attacking side of this ban phase, specifically with Lion. Who knows, though? I mean, anything, any, things could change. Uh, and that's what usually happens. Again, rapidly leading up to a LAN event, you see the whole meta shift across all regions because people are trying their best to change things up to gain an advantage. It's interesting little tidbit there. Yeah, and you definitely are going to need it in this sort of matchup. This is where everything comes out. You're fighting for survival. Yeah. And for, for Challenger League teams, you're fighting for a, a new career in Pro League. Yeah, and one, really quick, if, in case you're wondering how I'm connecting the lead up to a LAN event to relegations, because they are kind of on opposite ends of the field, uh, I connect them specifically through uh, scripts. Screaming, dry running, you know, what goes on behind scenes, they touch each other. You know, when you when you have the uh, the teams going to land, they're all practicing, they're all learning things, they're all putting stuff into the behind closed doors meta that continually evolves in Siege. And that does trickle down here to relegations. It yeah. trickles down all the way. It happens before land and it happens after land. Mm. There, there's always that thing where there's new things that are still hidden and you really kind of want to show them maybe some pocket strategies for important matches that you'll have either at LAN or right before it. And there's some others where now, okay, we, we are after our LAN event, we've had massive changes to the game, we've had new operators, new strategies, new maps maybe, etc. And all of that has to be accounted for. And that's where you see the big shifts. People learn new things to apply. And here's Obey Alliance applying what they have learned be assaulting into hookah so what do you do take control circle uh, couch and you just have to clear 
every single bit here. Face checking from Abunai. There's no reinforcements that are set on the hallway here from the lounge. And I like this drone as well, being set up from the Jackal on 90. So it'll give you information way wide into 90. And you'll be able to compete against any opponent on the other end of this hallway. As you do see, there has been an entire array of punch holes that have been set up by the defenders. And they're going to be using those later on as the assault gets more aggressive. So that from Abu Nai was he was just checking to see if anyone was playing at vase. There was nobody at the vase position. So he switches to the explosive, tries to clear out Cocktail Bar, pushing up and oh, it's a double way crossfire. Neptunes comes out on top through that crossfire and gets the kill. Forrest now up against the wall as he's got no one to support him. And as Callout is eliminated in Aqua by Neptunes again, it's looking really bad for Obey. Their double push here onto Cocktail Bar has been thwarted. And it's getting even worse as Gonfi adds to the tally, leaving just Fozo and Grixer. Uh, well, both on side of that, uh, or outside on that hookah balcony. And that's not even near the site, really. The, the objective here is still clear the roamers, but they've hit a brick wall. And I don't expect Obey to recover from this. Now, Fozo's going to try to maybe find a kill here and there, but Reloading. there's just not much when it comes to flexibility. There's so much effort and manpower and utility being set upstairs by the Sonics, which is why, I mean, you look at this and the way that things are set up, you expect this to be a hook attack, but it isn't. They're so far back. Goddess will get one to get down, though, by Grixer. Right here. We're on the Ash. Got to go for the Ace to save this one for Obey Alliance. It really was mistimed. Everybody from Obey looking the wrong way as they try to enter a bit overzealous. And it'll be the Jaeger that just stand around the corner and with support from the castle. I love the double angle play from the Sonics. They had coverage over everything and hesitation, no steps. The Zofia came in. She was looking at the right way and then she looked the other way towards the blue stairs at the last second and everything was thwarted. Same thing happened to the Jackal and things fell apart. So to put it bluntly, the coordination there on Obey wasn't fantastic. Sonic's pushing all the right buttons at all the right times. When they managed to actually take the fights, they were always in the advantage. Uh, we ha saw a really big round in particular from Neptunes. Got to applaud his efforts on the castle. So props to him for that. Pivoting to the right angles at the right moments. On the uh, side of Obey, a little bit of uh, trepidation. Kind of obvious there in that attack. You could see the setup. You, every, I think you all could put together that setup. It was double hookah bar balcony, uh, single aqua, and double VIP hall. A simple pincer strategy onto the top floor, clear out the roamers, then start hitting the site. But every single fight went the way of the Sonics because the Sonics were timing themselves really well and because Obey were just a little bit too slow on the punch, honestly. Yep. They had a couple moments there where, or a little bit too slow, a little bit too fast, whatever you want to look at. Because you could say, okay, Obey didn't seize the opportunity. Because they did. They had a few moments where Sonics were not set up properly, and Obey could have capitalized. On the flip side of that, they also could have waited longer, used their smokes their, and the rest of the utility a little bit more wisely to facilitate a late push and make the uh, gunfights go their way. Either way, but Obey found themselves right in the middle in an unhappy place. Yeah, there was a lot of time for Obey to work with. They just didn't use that oh-so-important uh, bit of material to their advantage. That's how things fall apart. I mean, it's one small wrong look, one small mistake. That is something that's going to lose you the entire the entire round. And this is something with, with the Sonics. They, they know this. They might have not had a, a great Pro League season, but it's not like these are basics that have escaped them the entire time. Now, Albunai will come in and lose the gunfight to Slubbin up in 90. Grixer will refrag, but he takes quite a bit of damage as well on the Ash. Goddess will tank the grenade as it's thrown right onto her, and she spots the Rukebi laying down on the Lamborghini. The Lamborghini itself by the doorway. Goddess, oh, can she find the head here? It might be forced away from the front desk. She looks away and gets shot in the back. Fozo is ready, prone on the floor. It falls for Sonics. Is now super to be forced out in his small rotation hole here, picked up by the lobby. Gonfi will be using the drone to his advantage, and he will win the gunfight. 
but so low on HP. He's gonna need the support from Super, and they are both doubling up here on the Dokebi. Find the kill. No! Oh, oh Fozo, beautiful kill as he turns around. Comfy solo on HP, cannot retaliate, and it's Super left all on his own here in the lobby. Low on HP, he's identified, he's spotted, he'll be detected, but he'll draft Fozo. The fuser is now on the floor, and he might not know about any of this right now. He rotates around, and the smoke will be thrown right at the doorway, but it will miss. Here's the second one as well to be confirmed, but the Dokebi's already been saved. You fire into the first, and Forrest will go down. Run away, Mr. Gump. Here's the second smoke. Yes, it'll be thrown. No more left here for Super Utility-wise, and six shotgun shells. Waits for the cross at the Dokebi. He's slow, so low on HP, but gets shot from the lobby. Well done by Grixer to follow up and obey, resecure the round as it got a bit hairy there. Super so close to saving it. Honestly, Super had a great position to win that. What actually happened there, and it's, un well, what I think happened, I'm sure Super will tell, tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> he will. Was, he, was, he felt pressured by the guy in the main lobby. You could see the tracers come in through the rotation. So because a lot of you, I'm sure, are wondering why he pushed into delivery, why he was trying to take the fight to the guy he knew to be on delivery. And that's just it. He knew where that delivery guy was. He knew if he took that fight, he could win it and then force it into one versus one. Not a lot of cover and delivery by the desk, but you can make it work. Plus, he had to have expected the diffuser to be there. So he figures, okay, I can play off of that if I win that fight. The problem was that stretch of land between supply slash storage and the delivery doorway is so vast. It's just so wide in that situation. And the rotation holes that are set up foot level really ended up being... Uh, yeah, the uh, nail. I guess the last nail in the coffin there for Super. Yeah. So, what uh, what was happening there is Super was just trying to take the fight that he thought he could to force the one v one out of smokes and only. Well, uh, sorry, 50 seconds left. So, I mean, I get it. I get the thought process. Obviously, he can't see through walls like we can. So, it's uh, unfortunate that he didn't know. He probably could have just anchored. Yeah. And stayed on that shield, kept the advantage in the engagements. It's so unfortunate that the first smoke missed. Um, if if he had that last smoke, or it had, if the oh, first true. one had been thrown correctly, it would have killed the Dokebi right then and there, and he would have had an advantage. These are tiny things, and it's not a fault. It's just it, it happened. It did, yeah. It, I mean, it was just a tiny little piece of wood too. Yeah. Could you imagine that? I know. Just one little piece of wood's not there. He's got an extra gas canister to delay for another good, decent amount of time. You can chain those even on top of each other for longer than they're worth. If you're if you're good at smoking. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so one to one now. Yeah, there's a camera shot down in the top of 90. Comfy is playing the dock this time around. It's got one of those newfangled shields to use as well. So. Kind of a mirror as well to be used. I love the bulletproof camera in the hallway. If you don't have access to a maestro, it's a very good alternative. You can bring the Zofia, deal with that pretty easily. Might be Jaeger ADS somewhere trying to protect it. Try to burn it, maybe if you have the utility for it. Otherwise, Obey should be able to clear that out and leave the Sonics blind for a bit of a moment there. Goddess will be spotted, playing the smoke inside of the minibar. And Neptunes is sitting up on the Echo by the blue staircase. And call out into Aqua. He doesn't even need an assist. He solo drones in and pushes, and he's got good control from this position. He might even go for a rush with the rest of his team. Grixer's in, but he can't make anything happen. Callout and Foz are the ones to actually get the kills. Goffy gonna be down by Callout and finished off there for his second kill. Super trying to retake from the blue stairs, but they've already lost control. There's an attacker by Vase, and Slevin has to take three different fights to get up these stairs. It won't happen. Obey, take their second round in the third of this map. Very well done here by Obey. And this time, they slipped through the cracks of the defense of the Sonics. The fact that we looked at it is like, Wait, suddenly, why is there a player right next to the shield? There are actually two pushing up into Hookah at the same time from the balcony. Callouts were true. Cameras were there. The drones gave them all the info that they needed. And once the linchpins of the anchor were taken away from the Sonics, it all fell apart. And if you look at it in the very first round, Obey had a similar entry as well that was prepared. Unfortunately, they looked the wrong way. Now they warm up. They give the correct information back to the their teammates, 
and that's how you're able to capitalize. If anything, you're overwhelming your opponents with just so much fire and so much bodies pushing onto a site that they they just cannot decide which one to shoot at first. It's it really is overwhelming your opponents with numbers. You you bite off more than you can chew as a player, and even if you get a kill off of it, you're gonna be taken off and your position will be lost regardless, which means even a bigger loss because the site itself has been forfeit. But that was last round. What's the change? Sonics will maneuver their uh, shield to be a bit in a different uh, position here, closer to the reinforcement in the center of the wall between Hookah and the pool table room. So they're gonna have a bit more protection to deal with, plus the bomb chassis it's, uh, itself here on B. I'll assume Gomfi will go for that same spot as he did last time, and the pulse will be the big change off of the mute that Super ran in the previous round. So I'm quite excited to see how and where he actually sets up with the operator, because if your problem was to detect when the assault is gonna happen, the pulse is a great way to, to kind of negate that factor and predict things, but he's probably gonna be playing from the bottom floor, and that's something that Obey might not be expecting at all. I think I saw somebody maneuvering around here by the kitchen, but Abu and I will be checking around and there will be no cameras left standing. There's the drone, there's the drone. Yep, you got, you got all the info. And it seems like this site is fairly open, fairly flexible. You see two players, one behind the shield, one by the mini bar, and there's the echo on blue stairs. You're expecting one or two players to be off of this site. And Force is looking for the kill, oh. but Nitro perfectly placed from Super. That's the play that the Sonics were looking for. All right, so Super gaining his team an advantage early on. It's going to be a solid one. A pretty common C4. Obey, I guess, not expecting that. They do have IQ, so they can play counter to that uh, C4 from below. Neptune's is going to get Abu Nai, so it's getting worse and worse for Obey Alliance as kills continue to rack up in favor of the Sonics. Fozo trying to challenge a shield. You just don't challenge the new shields like that, Fozo. That's not how they work. It's going to be an advantage ever deeper for Sonics. But Kala will get the first kill for his team. Uh, Super hits the floor. This is still doable for the last two Obey players, though not very likely to be a success. I mean, considering the diffusers down on Hookah Balcony, there's only a minute left, and these last two attackers are nowhere... Well, okay. Grixer's pretty close to that diffuser. He'll pick it up, I'm sure. But they're nowhere near each other, and they're going to have trouble actually hitting the site together in any meaningful way. I love this drone here. It's going to give Grixer quite a bit of information, but because there's the shield, you can't deal with it. You don't have any breaching rounds, nothing of the sorts. And there's the support gone. Callout is done, and it's all up to Grixer on the Ash. He's got all three rifles that are looking right down him. And still even one player maneuvering his way up into the hallway. There's the shield. There's blue. There's the Jaeger that has just passed. The smoke will be thrown in right at the doorway. Uh, entrance to Hookah, and there's a lot of smoke in here. A lot of damage done to the Ash, He's down a half HP, and Grixer is only moments away from death. At 15 seconds left, 15 seconds you're left. gonna have to go for Hail Mary. And there's the push, immediately shut down. I love this from the Sonics. They adapted so, so well, and Super running the pulse on the bottom floor was just excellent. If you stop them dead in their tracks before they push the button for the aggression, that's where you can just halt it right then and there. Wonderful play. The thing that really puzzles me, I mean, there's a lot going on in that round, right? Like the C4 from below was pretty important, uh, of course. That's a common C4 for sure, because the challenge into the VIP hallway, into the cocktail bar and, and billiards, that, that, that angle is very commonly taken by the attackers. And yep. it's hard to hold VIP. So what do you do? You play Pulse or any other C4 operator, throw them in kitchen, um, done. That's it. That's, that is a beautiful way to counter that position. Super did it well. Um, Attackers need to locate and defeat I'm really, you know, they gotta lay that at the feet of Obey. Not expecting that. Kind of surprising. The more surprising thing for me, though, and this is weird because it's, it's staring Obey in the face. That shield on the vase doorway that Neptune saw, uh, just sat on for pretty much the whole round. It was it? It was Neptune's, right? Yeah. Pretty sure. Um, there was an Ash and a Zofia, if I'm not mistaken. They both have the tools to clear ADSs. Yep. 
Why not? Well, the Zofia got knocked out in the early stages thanks to that Nitro Cell, and the Ash That's was true. not expecting any of this. That's true. But no, but the Ash... The Ash could have. Yeah, it definitely could. Destroyed the shield. I don't know where the ADSs were set or if there was any ADS set in there, but... I the know. Ash can can clear the ADS. Very much so. And then destroy the shield. Exactly. She can clear two ADSs and, the and then destroy the shield. It's it mm, weird. Just weird. And and that was such a such a roadblock for Obey through the round. So not this grand strategy mistake that Obey made in that last round that cost them necessarily. As much as it is some like, hey, there's a problem right in front of you, maybe solve it. Then move on. I'm sure they had a reason. I'm sure they did, but I'm not sure what it is. Well, moving on. Um, it's going to be a... Uh, looks like a double bar defense, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Seems so, and they're putting a decent chunk of utility here. Mm -hmm. uh, Sonics, again, to hold on to that top floor. So Hookah will be essential to their hold. I really like this. I don't think enough teams do this. Uh, they mostly will focus on the bottom floor, but there's a lot being put down from Sonics to hold on. We'll see how this plays out for them. Last time we were here, uh, Obey struggled with their timing. You could say they got unlucky, but you know, that that is really how this kind of comes down sometimes. And I'll see what happens this time around as they are ready to rush into Cocktail Bar. There's gonna be a lot of pressure on Neptunes. Goddess though, putting in work, getting two for herself, and Gompy gets one to add to it. Neptunes landing his shots again, and Gompy the final kill. It's a okay. flawless round for the Sonics. Truly impressive. I mean that's that's the same thing that happened last time we were here. Yeah. I don't I don't know what's happening here for for Obey trying to assault this site at least in the way that the Sonics are defending it from the top floor, which is something I really like. Um they they were assaulting into billiards and hookah as sites very efficiently, you know? There are mistakes here and there, but this is with less utility being placed on those oh-so-important positions. Yet, their take is completely different in the way that they try to do it, and they falter in even harder ways, I want to say, when trying to push through there. You saw Gomfi, the Jaeger, was just uncontested the entire time, and he was able to col collect two Defender, kills there pretty swiftly. And that. Goddess did a ton of work on the Echo there, taking out at least two players. It was just Information Attack City and the Sonics off. were catching them all. There's nothing that Obey could do against them. You look at this though, we're nearing the end of this half. This is, of course, the sixth round, so the last one of this half for Sonics on the defense. Obey are looking for one more on the board. If they make it 3-3, that's a good start for them. Not course, bad. So if Sonics trail away from the defense with 4-2, to they'll be sitting pretty for the second half. Well, we talked about how Coastline is one of those more balanced maps in terms of attack yeah, defense. So 3-3, three, three, still okay. anyone's game. Now, uh, Kitchen. Oh, last time we were here, it was really interesting, actually. It looked like we had a good chance for the Sonics to take it, but Obey managed to win it out. It was actually their Obey's first win. And uh, Super was in a one versus three, if I'm not mistaken. Couldn't make it happen. But... Uh, he put in a good effort. We saw a lot of, um, un, I guess, unanswered kills coming out for Obey, where they just were able to rack up such a tally that it was too hard for Sonic to bounce back. Putting all that onto Son uh, Super shoulders in the end again. But I'm sure this time will be a little bit different, although we have seen a lot of repeat rounds so far through this map. I really want to say that that round was won and lost at the lobby. True. True. Just because of the way that the setup was was placed from the Sonics, and once the area was taken, there was just little that could be done. And there's the play from the Jackal, so you'll know that there's players in the back here playing inside of Projector, and Abunai is going to try to assault that. Is there anybody coming in from the opposite end of the map to kind of pressure the Sonics? That's re really the big question. You cannot let the Sonics escape with three players placed here because if anything, they're at least burning so much time off of you. And that's something you can't just afford to let go. Slubbin will find Abu Nai. The Zofia has been taken away. And Slubbin will just double down and sit on his own in the theater now. Chilling. There's going to be a call out to get rid of that chill with two kills. And things are starting to heat up here for Obey Alliance. 
Gomfi and Goddess still positioned to hold on to the main lobby. Oh, Super oh, yes. likely on anchor. These breaching charges are going to be a huge factor as it will force the Sonics to reposition. Super actually not anchoring. He is set up for a late flank by Vase. He could at any moment start running towards 90, come up behind Obey Alliance. Obey has to be vigilant and look out for that, but looks like she actually Super is going to bring it back. We're hitting the last minute of this round, so it makes sense for Super to bring himself back to the site and try to anchor this out, especially using his gas canisters. He could be a great assist to his team. Yeah, they're trying to find the Echo playing from behind, and Goddess, oh, she runs away, and Super takes a tiny bit of damage here on the smoke, actually down to around 75 HP. Gonfi trying to fight here against the IQ, but Goddess will be the one to find call out. Gonfi inhales just a tiny bit of that smoke and is taken very low. Around 5 HP left, and it's Grixer to finish him off. A 3v2, but the Ash so low on health. Oh, unfortunate, the Super steps right into the welcoming arms of the Dokebi. It's Goddess on her own, and there's reinforcements everywhere to block her position. She's got to be spotted as well, and will lose out the gunfight against Forrest. A run away, and there's Obey to tie it. 3-3 at the half. Very good effort here from Obey, as Sonics really are kind of trying their best to move and maneuver around the map efficiently, but they're getting caught off guard in one location and the other, and when it comes to this, either you lose the lobby completely and you're forced to turtle, or you're comp or you're just forced to stay inside of the lobby, and there's kind of nobody left to anchor, rotate between the site and your uh, bunker, I guess, at this point. You know, big thing about that is the the jackal being unbanned. I gotta say, that was one of those tools that allowed Obey to get any rounds. Jackal on coastline is Attackers the absolute to worst to deal bombs, with as can. a defender. And I'm, I, I can't believe I didn't even make note of it when we finished the ban phase, because he is so frequently banned on this map, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, this is one of those maps where you just don't want him to, uh, to be in play. Actually, stand corrected. Uh, his ban rate is high, but it's not the highest. Capitao is the most frequently banned on this map ah. at a whopping 25%. And he isn't, and now we finally get to see him. Yeah. That was something that was not used at all. But I stand... Yeah, by Obey. Yes. Yeah, but I stand by my point. And I stand by that I, I, that Jackal was definitely the reason why uh, Obey got a lot of those rounds. He, he forced those defenders to reposition so frequently. It was just... Whoa. Must have been hard for uh, the Sonics to deal with. I like the way that Grixer does that. So he sprays the wall to make a bunch of bullet holes. And then he's, he sets up the bullet holes he wants to actually use um, in positions he knows. So it's the same kind of concept as, oh, I'll make a bunch of punch holes and then one little bullet hole. But since everyone's onto the whole bullet hole thing, <laughs> he's just hiding his bullet holes in other bullet holes now. That's, that's clever. It's clever. Uh, we do see that. I mean, it's not the first time I've ever seen it, but, you know... It's not the most frequent thing to be done. Usually that'll happen on um, what I would call a disposable wall, one that does not need to be held as much as it needs to be used to slow down. And that's exactly what Grix is trying to do here. He's trying to slow down his enemy. It's hard for the attack to challenge this. You can see he's faking oh. out there, but Neptune doesn't fake out well enough. Grixer bides his time and strikes when the moment is right. Two drones eliminated, plus a player slubbing though. Find the refrag, and that's the Jaeger. Taken off, and at least you're equalizing numbers, but you still have to deal with that pesky vigil. And because you're kind of limited on drones, Sonics might need to sacrifice some late round A flank drones right now. As they'll spot the shield, and it's been already set up here. Super will find it. He has, the, he has everything really to deal with it. And all these bullet holes. This is the most annoying thing to deal with in the game currently. It's understandable. It's just how will you kind of prepare yourself to push it away. And oh, Fozo so close to getting the kill from above, but it's Gonfi to find Grixer. There's the Vigil. It's been annoying you the entire round so far. Fozo will spray in and do a bit of damage to Super, but he's still on the repel. He's still falling back. And Super, a beautiful peek up as he takes down Fozo. There's two players now left alive for Obey, and they're forced to go into fragging mode. And this is not a good spot for you to be in. Final breaching ground will be picked off and used to destroy the castle barricade. And the entry is there, possible to assault. 
Got us established a good angle using her Xgaros there. It's a common one, again, from VIP all the way into Billiards. It's going to force these Obey players to play a little bit safer. They won't be able to actually rotate it as well as they would like to. And considering it's a four versus two, it's made even worse. Now, here comes the Jackal again. That footprint is of a dead person, likely, so he can't scan it. Slev is looking for the angle. This is a different kind of setup, and Callout's actually going to get super on Repel. No Nomads to be put onto that uh, run out, and that's why Obey banned the Nomad. Forest will also get Gompy and call it his second kill. It's all a goddess all of a sudden, and call it gets the triple for the win. What a clutch two versus four, and Obey, oh, they bring it back. That was beautiful teamwork from Obey. They knew where the attack was coming from, and they just ran it. They played together the, the smoke and the echo doubling down, turning to the same location, and making noise when they should be covering their teammates as well to distract the Sonics. You have numbers, but unfortunately, those drones were sacrificed earlier, and I, I really want to put it down to just lack of information because the Vigil wasted so, so many drones and so much time as well, where at the end, it got complicated before the push actually happened, and you were kind of limited on time and space. Well, I said at the beginning of today that uh, Obey still have Defenders to prove themselves. And that right there, that round, is that's how you prove yourself. Yep. That's how you get the, the accolades and all the and the praise that, uh, I guess, well, you got to earn it. Yep. And uh, well done to call out especially. He had a really good round there. Great position. Making a name for himself. And now we get to go to the double bar. For the second defense from Obey. Oh, and on the other hand, since we're talking about making names for yourself, improving yourself, uh, from Sonics, that is how you get relegated. Because as much as that was a really cool combat from Obey, you also got to point your finger at Sonics a little bit there. They had a, a frustrating round, and I, I can imagine that in, in the comms of Sonics, after that one, there was either dead silence and pure frustration, or guys, guys, something along those lines. It happens, it, it happens, and it's gonna be a real test for Sonics to see if they can bounce back from a round like that. A real proving ground here for them. Oh, for both teams. You know what, I do that all the time. <laughs> I do that all the time, and yet every time I see it, it is so hard to look at when the drone bounces back yeah. where you don't want it to like, be. Oh no. I hate it. I have to do it. When I do it, I'm like, really, dude? <laughs> yeah. It's just a, an eye roll moment, I guess. It is. But Goddess is going to be joining in, and you'll see this is a very odd way of setting up. It's just denying this office from the Sonics, and they're even going to be using a, a crossbow bolt for it, and Abunai with a refrag on Gompi. This is huge. You lost the lesion, sure, but you killed the Ash, and you're able to expend utility from the Capital, but a great kill from Slubbin. Make sure numbers are cut down for Obey. Still going to be fighting back with 3v4. Neptune's taking a bit of damage on the IQ, down to around 70 HP. Oh, so close there to getting shot out. I believe that was the Echo as well, playing by the vase. Yeah, that's Forrest. He's going to be checking all the bullet holes and all the angles that he has a preset. Super is calling out information on the smoke. Uh, let's call it, we'll fall back. Not sure if he spotted the drone behind him, but Forrest will be spotted by a drone as he gets up closer to this blue stairs. And Slavin is watching for rotations through the security. Well, slow, methodical so far from Sonics. Clearing out those roamers, doing a great job of that. Now they're going to start using that top four advantage to try and pick off some of the anchors. They've also opened up a hole into the blue bar, and that's a safe hole, which means that they can rotate without being exposed to the long angle on the far, far north side of the blue bar room. It's a good rotation to have. Of course, yokai drones and smokes are still in play for Obey Alliance, so they can delay and deny that hole for now. Question is, for how long can they do that? No gas canisters left on call out, which means it's all on the Yokai drones now. Oh, call beautiful out again. Kill. He keeps going for these angles and keeps winning these fights, but he'll finally be shut down by Slevin. Oh, Forrest is in the fight, and he's okay, gonna get one, but Slevin gets his third. Then just Abu Nai in the one versus two. One of these attackers upstairs, one of them below. 
Diffuser in hands of Slevin, though, and he can go for the plant. He's going to do just that, but he has to stick it as we're getting low on time. Decent cover here from Neptunes. He's outside on the window now, and Abunai Abu has been spotted in the office. He's looking for the fights so he can put this into a one-on-one. -on -one. The rush is not going to work out for him, though, and Sonics will take their first attack round. Well done here, Sonics to recover in the round. I have to say, the, it got so close, the Echo got in the middle of the smoke, and had he survived exiting that perilous position while stopping the Diffuser from being dropped, it would have been massive. You had the Yokai, you wanted to get aggressive, and I really love the way that the IQ had an open hole as well. She had opened it herself with the Commando to have a look from pool table, all the way from that top floor down into the lobby. The singular rotation available for the Jaeger. You, if not get the kill, you'll at least be able to spot that Jaeger rotating around, going into security. That's where the Jackal was placed before, but because he was forced off of that position, he had to go and plant. The Sonics know how to predict these plays. They know how to position the themselves to deal with them. It's just sometimes some gunfights will just not go your way and your opponents will move in unpredictable manners, and you will have to adapt to it. And Sonics definitely adapted in that round. They end up with a tied scoreline at 4-4, and now we'll be seeing uh, Kitchen here as the next site from Obey Alliance. Of course, usually you see a Maestro. Maestro's banned in this case, so none of that over here. I don't know if somebody's gonna bring a bulletproof camera, but I assume that there's a big reliance on the Valkyrie and the Echo, so no real need for such a bit of uh, gadget. The fact that uh, the Valkyrie is not banned on Coastline is also another one of those one of those operators that's just so powerful. In this map. Jackal, Capital, well, Capital always, right? But Jackal, especially on this map, um, Valkyrie is really good here. Um, I mean, there's only so many bands, right? Is this going to be a rush? Because it might just be with the way that these attackers are setting up. It will be a rush into delivery. And good access here for Sonics, but they're being shut down by Obey. That's two unanswered kills, and it'll be a stall out for Sonics. They're going to fall out of delivery and start looking for kills elsewhere. Slebin will go to the main lobby to get Grixer. He did eat a little bit of damage in that fight, but at least there's a kill on the board for Sonics which puts them slightly back in this round. But no second kill for Slebin, as he's shut down by Abu Nai, peeking wide. Just Goddess and Super now. And, well, really, what can they do in this situation? Sure, a few players on Obey are lit up at 50 HP or so, but that's still not a lot to work with. And Goddess doesn't know which angle to look through, and it's completely understandable. You got two players that are going around. I just hope that for Obey, they don't get overzealous and contest Goddess too early here to try to find her. Forrest is looking the other way as he knows that's the only other angle he really has to deal with as he has the Jaeger to support him. And Goddess is watching from the Changing front that. lobby. Just trying to delay things, giving Super more time to go around the map and contest from there, but that's the reinforcement lost and stopped in its way. The red ball is off and Forrest will find one more to end the round. A rush that failed and then Obey Alliance kind of picking up all the crumbs. So this has thus far been a very back and forth match. Um, we've only seen two streaks in terms of rounds. Uh, Obey managed to get two in a row on attack and then Sonics put two in a row together on defense. Now here in the second half, it's been back and forth constantly. And it doesn't seem likely like we're it doesn't seem like we're gonna have a breakaway for either of these teams. You can expect this match um to pr at this rate go to the third map, assuming coastline can be repeated on cafe in terms of uh, both teams' performance. Now a reminder, this is Obey's map hit. So conceivably they would have some sort of advantage here. As again, okay. Let me run you guys through, if you're not familiar, how the best of three ban phase works. It's ban, ban, pick, pick. Ban, ban, and then you have your decider. Right. Real simple. Now what that means is that usually in a best of three ban phase, your map pick early on is you like your first or second map overall as a team. The one you like for first or second most. Because it cannot be avoided by the enemy. Because they only get rid of one. 
And usually that'll be a comfort man. So Obey, this is the map they really like. They are super comfy here. And that's why they brought us here. So they should take the win here. If Sonics manage to take this map number one, and reminder, there are no draws in best of threes. If Sonics manage to take map number one, then your outlook is bleak. Yep. Moving forward in the best of three. I completely agree. Got so, it. uh, and, yeah, it's, it's a lot of pressure on Obey. They are finding themselves currently up one, but like I talked about earlier, I mean, this has been such a back and forth. Yeah. I, I mean, I fully expect Sonics to bring this to OT, if nothing else. Kind of expecting Gomfi and Slubbin to come into their own now on the attacking side, and that's why you'll see them running the Jackal and the Ash. So you'll expect them to be the spearheads, or at least complementing one another. Super good spot here, and we'll take down Fozo. It's the castle, not the most important operators. The Capital has dropped very low on HP here, but the work's been done. That's one gun off of the board. You'll see the Vigil going for the same strategy as before. Neptunes will spot him and will just not even need to fight against it. Oh, does he know that there's uh, Abunai close to him? No, he does not. That's one collected as Abunai runs right into the lounge and he finds another one. Gomfi taken away as the Vigil is in support. Gomfi unsure of which location to look to. Now two players lost. He was so super solo in HP. Goddess will be able to find the refrag, but the work's already been done. The Jaeger has done so much work and Grixer has been allowed to be placed in 90 with no information on him. So was that Abunai being absolutely insane? A crazy player? Partially, yes. But you know what also it was? Uh, Sonic's not droning. <laughs> you can't assume Penthouse is fully clear. Come on. Come on. I mean, I'm sure that Sonic's going, why is he there? And rightfully so. That's a really weird position to play. No matter who you are, no matter what level you're at, but come on, be thorough. You know you have time to do it. It's unlucky for Sonics that they decided not to drone behind the penthouse bed. And Abu Nai took full advantage. Two kills for him. Going live. And no man advantage because we saw a kill earlier for Sonics. And that's two for Slevin. He's just chilling on the balcony. He puts two together, leaving just Grixer. So the efforts of Abunai earlier are not really mattering in the long run, it seems. And Grixer going to have to fight for 3k. Now he's got two opponents that are on low HP, but he's not landing his shots where they really count. And there you go. The entry from Slebin and the final kill. Sonics will take another round. Great round in particular on the side of Slebin. I'm not sure how Slubbin was allowed to get those two free kills, I want to say. Yeah, they, they certainly were. They were just given to him and the round fell apart. It, They're just it, giving him away. We're giving it away, Gazan. You don't know that one? Uh, it's a reference. I get it. Oh, okay. Right? I've forgotten where it comes from, though. Free. It's Is it free, Gazan? It's free real estate. <laughs> they're, they're giving it away. They're giving it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are. 5-5. Five, five. This is definitely a hot, contested game. And we're still in the first map of the first series. So we still have one more to go after this anyways. And it's those tiny mistakes. Again, mispositioned one drone that is just a bit off and, as and you suddenly lose two players off of it. And there's Slubbin on the Jackal was able to collect two free kills after his team had lost two as well. Just fighting along by the penthouse. Mm. Indeed. Yeah. It's, I mean, we've seen a lot of rounds go the way that you know you want to go. <clears throat> Really? We, we've had a lot of those. That last one in particular was a real doozy. Um, I mean, Sonics had one as well when they were on the attack on this very specific site. It was 4v2, and then great teamwork from Obey, and no one is innocent. Yep. Five seconds remaining. You're going to make a mistake. And in, in this level of play, you mess up one tiny thing, and you're going to really feel it. Forrest is setting up here for a uh, play early on, but yeah, the drone will be able to spot him and he's gonna fall back. Goddess knows what's up. You're not gonna fool her. She's being thorough. Mm -hmm. I mean, she didn't see the, the breakage on the drone jump there, but I'm sure she knows. And it's been uh, a good been match located. so far. Gomfi gonna be applying early pressure to this main window repel by the billiards. Ooh, two ADSs. Nice awareness there from Gomfi to get those. You'll also get the Castle Barricade on Aqua Door, which is going to allow his team to maneuver in that position when they go for the eventual take. Well, Slevin coming in downstairs. 
Now, with control of Office, he can deny C4s from below later when it's important. He can also apply pressure using his shotgun from below and dislodge any defenders who are in pesky spots like that uh, Jaeger we saw in Penthouse, should he find any of them. Yeah, right now there's none of that shield setup that was played in uh, Aqua before. But Slubbin, again, using the ITA, tons of flexibility on the Jackal. There's a reason why he is a really big ban operator. Yeah. When it comes to a lot of maps nowadays, specifically on coastline, there's so much soft destruction that even a, se a secondary shotgun is just massive. You have a great assault rifle to use as your main assault. You got double smokes and your Inox as well to track your opponents should you find anyone. And people that don't know, if you just shoot the floorboard and somebody actually walked over it, you can just scan the footprint from below. That works. Slubbin, while he scans the head, he finds it. Fozo is down. Let's castle away. Now, speaking of below, I mean, this is some great work here from the Sonics, and Super is going to expect the peak from Abunai. Meanwhile, Neptunes will get a kill onto Grixer. We didn't see that one, but it doesn't really matter. Nice shot from Kala. Wow. Gonfi, though, will shut him down before another clutch is in order. Forrest now, the last defender, and he'll get one. Can he get any more? Spray is not going to connect there as the wall, I believe, is reinforced. That's the Obey setup working against them in this particular instance. Now, there is potential for a runout here on the player on Repel, but the Claymore's in the way. He'll have to deal with that. There's the runout, and it will be successful. He can actually heal himself back to full. He's got a decent amount of time left on this Diffuser, so he can do this. He's going to full commit to the overheal. This might actually work for him. He's got to find two bodies. One in the corner, and he finds it. A triple for Forrest. He needs but one more. But he's running out of time, and he doesn't know where this last attacker oh. is. Such a nice try from Forrest. But Goddess, ever patient, ever vigilant, will shut him down and take the round for her team. That was a beautiful reverse repel there from Goddess. And you saw the duck flicked up because he knew that something was up, unfortunately. He was looking at the railing, and it was just the perfect location for Goddess to be at. Well done. Nice try, as you said. Mm -hmm. But Sonics now are on map point. As remember, the first map in this best of three series. We're kind of warming you guys up for uh, Pro League Finals next week. I can't believe it. I, yeah, it's, it's right around the corner. We we um, will be going on the oh, we going on the seventh. I'm leaving Sunday morning. Oh yeah, yeah, really. I have at noon. I have a flight from Krakow to London and then to Tokyo. <sighs> wow. And then I'll I was taking a bullet train. That's fast, well, man. We might be on the same bullet train going back to Tokyo after the event is done. I'll tell you what, we're gonna be. I mean, pretty darn happy regardless. Yeah, mine is uh, mine is I'm doing Tokyo after the event, then Kyoto. Kyoto from Tokyo. Yeah, uh, uh, after, 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 after. I'll be staying for a pretty long time. Yeah, I'm staying like uh, over, just over 19 days. I, yeah, I, I'm, I, about, I'm in that same region. Yeah, so, hey, uh, I discovered yesterday after two hours of lo looking mm -hmm. up uh, trains, because I'm used to European trains, which means I can just book literally everything online and have my e-tickets. You can't do that in Japan unless you buy the Japan Rail Pass, but because... I have one trip back. It's just not worth the money. But for you, completely fine. I don't know if I'm going to be getting... I'm Actually, right now I'm doing the math on just that. It's like 300 bucks. It's expensive. the Japan Railway. Yeah. It's a lot of money. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm doing the math. But you know what else we're doing? We're doing relegations for North America. And right now, Sonics are a match point for yeah. map one. Uh, that could push them to this. Well, I will, no matter what, whoever wins this. We'll go to cafe. Um, but it could push them up one course early on. And it would be Obey's map if Sonics wins it, which is, again, very important in the best of three. It, and that's exactly what I wanted to go to. It's just, it's, Obey had a great time on Coastline right now, but this is their pick and they should be comfortable in it yes. as best as humanly possible. And if Sonics take this, it, it might just be up to map two. Now, again, this is all speculation. Who knows what will actually happen? up in the air as Sonics are the Pro League team. And currently they are showing that they can adapt a bit better than Obey, especially when crunches are uh, really up against them. So when you're down a manpower, you can find those early picks, huge for the Sonics. Nitro Cell being set up by Callout and it will hit, but Gomfi instantly going for a shot. And that's an echo for IQ, huge, huge trade kills. Yeah, a little mini game there eliminated with both of them. 
Uh, IQ is not going to hunt the Yokai drones anymore, but they might still persist. They might be pre-placed, and that will allow Obey to gather information on those Yokais, if nothing else. Unlikely they'll be spotted as well in the long run. Now, Sonics have good control on the top floor. They are making this uh, go in their way in terms of soft destruction from above. They've lost some breaching charges, though, on their IQ, so that is, of course, going to slow them down. There is no dedicated soft destructor, like a, a buck or a sledge. You've got explosive soft destruction, but that is finite. So you have to be really selective of where you use it. Mm -hmm. And it has other uses as well. So Sonic's just focusing on taking control of the main lobby. You said how the last time we were in Kitchen, this was so important to the outcome of the round. And I agree. Main lobby now firmly in control for the Sonics. That'll give them a good edge and a good platform to push into delivery, which is their next targets as they set up to plant that diffuser just inside of delivery with cover from the main lobby on the crossfire. All of these defenders are set up on the west side. There's only one even close to deny this plant. And there's both Slebin and Gomfi to try and deny the rotation. They're doing just that as the, as the plant starts to come in. Firebolts and gas er, smokes coming into cover. Grixer will land the C4 onto Gomfi. Call out with the rush. Positions himself on the diffuser, actually. Perfect spot to be, but Slebin will get his second to shut that down. No diffuser plant, and it's going to have to be a stick. Not likely to happen. Obey on the retake strategy. Wow. What a retake. Call out MVP of the game for me so far. Yeah. Every time there's a plan, every time he needs to shine, he's put there. He does it. Shotgun in the face. SMG 11 flicks wherever you want him. And he just knows exactly when to react. This is a lot of map awareness that has been cultivated over hundreds upon hundreds of hours of play and scrims. This is what you get to. And it's overtime, by the way, for people that are watching out there. We didn't get it overtime in EU relegations. We haven't had these for a while, but here we are. You play your best of three, basically in the rounds. And who's starting first on defense? That's Obey. They might actually have an advantage with that. So that was really that was a really interesting round, actually, that last one. I, I want to take a, a moment to talk about that because Attackers need to look there are certain defensive strategies and, and certain sites where I would you would say that it's a retake kind of site. Kitchen can be one of those. It is hard to play it as such, and the reason why it is hard to play Kitchen as a retake site, um, and if you don't know what a retake site is, it's basically where the defenders, instead of trying to play, hold hard anchor positions, they let the attack take the site, then retake into the defense before the defense can get the plant down. It's very difficult to pull off. But anyway, the reason why this site is hard to do as a retake site is because of how many angles the attackers have access to to cut off rotations, to set up long angle fights, which will always be in the advantage of the attack. But the really interesting thing about that last round is that despite the abundance of control for Sonics, for example, top floor, main lobby, these positions that, like, the ones that I'm talking about that are so powerful, at cutting off those rotations, so good at denying a retake strategy. Despite that amount of control for Sonics, they had it all and a decent amount of manpower to use those angles. They just didn't. The players in the main lobby tried to rush in to support the plant. The players outside delivery stacked on top of each other and got very little done. The C4 was a serious monkey wrench in the gears. And most importantly, most egregious, I would say, is that Sonics were not using their top floor control to cut off rotation. Uh, they had four people alive, if I'm not mistaken. They didn't need to double up on one of the angles and they could have put someone upstairs. I'm just puzzled. I just don't know if they, because the IQ was killed, and you said it in the previous round, they didn't have extra soft destruction to allow them to get those extra angles. It's true. And because but of that, they were forced to just move. I also said that they had some uh, explosive soft destruction that they could have used selectively. And, s oh, oh no, that's the second time Caught has landed a C4 from below on this site. We're going to overtime, by the way. In case you're wondering how we're on Kitchen again, it's because overtime resets the rotation of those defensive sites. So. Goddess, gotten rid of early. And as I was trying to finish there, you would have used that ex that explosive soft destruction selectively on the rotation like we see being used right now. Yep. Um, but they didn't. Anyway, moving on to this round. Great job there from Callout. This is what was supposed to happen in that previous round. Neptunes are looking to shoot the feet and Callout has been eliminated. Well done for Neptunes. He just...
sits there, waits for the right moment for it. You kill call out. The round is winnable. That's, that's a good point. That's the way it seems right now on the side of Obe. Well, Super is going to find one of his own, eliminating Forced. So that's the Echo spotted and taken off. I know there's a lot of soft walls here set up for Obey, but there are some that might not be too... I mean, you, you kind of don't want to leave them too soft for too long, as you see here. Uh, it's the main entry from the lobby. I wonder where the rest of the reinforcements are set. Probably somewhere up above, but oh, a free kill and the Fuser drop. Nitro cell thrown, but will miss here from Grixer, and he's going to fall back. He knows where the Fuser is. And that's a great play here to eliminate Gonfi before his effect can really be felt when pushing onto the site. But the wall has been opened. Super will pick up the diffuser. Gumine will be thrown right at the doorway. And do they know that the Valkyrie is nearby? Abunai is also waiting close by Grixer. Fozo will be felled by Slubbin, but Abunai perfect positioning. Neptunes will find Grixer, and now Abunai is spraying in. The fuser has been denied. There's so little time. Abunai don't peek for it. He still finds it. Abunai does it, and Neptunes will fall. Obey, collect the first round of overtime on the defense. And that was beautiful play there from Obey to just fall back. There's no reason for you to keep on fighting. And the Sonics, not enough information. Speaking of information, and I'll, I'll get to this in a second, but really quickly, I want to give credit to Abunai. Beautiful play there. Mm. But speaking of information, um, you could see there at the end when it was the one versus one, Abunai versus the IQ. You can see he wasn't aware where anyone was until, oh, split second, he reacts to someone's in open area. Someone's in the garden. And what is that? That's his teammates making calls. That's information being relayed. Or he heard it, but that's less likely considering it was an IQ. It was very quiet. Whatever the case is, actually, it could have been, it could have been he heard it because it could have been a drop from the top for all we know. That would have made sense. Because remember I was talking about how relevant that's, top four control is? That's true. I'm not sure where yeah. the IQ was in that moment, but I think he got the... Well, Either way, e either information from his teammates or just great he uh, hearing from uh, Abu Nai, assuming that was a drop down from the IQ. Either way, great job to Abu Nai. He deserves a lot of credit for that win. He hasn't had the most amazing match overall, but impact frags, guys. Impact frags. Now, we're moving on to the second to last round of overtime. Of course, it is first to eight when you get into OT. Um, so Obey has a chance to end it here. They're going to be attacking on two billiards or hookah. Attackers are heading out to the fuse of bomb. Now let's see. Let's go through history here. Uh, we have seen billiards twice from the Sonics. They have won it once, lost it once. So this is winnable for Obey Alliance. Very much so. We did see some sites from the Sonics where it just didn't seem like Obey could win it. Uh, that would be two bar or double bar. That double bar was just not something that uh, Obey were, were capable of winning. Their their no. pincer strategy on the top four was not working great. And actually, this is the double bar. It's oh. not hookah. I was I was wrong. This is the setup is the same as it was in the past, and yep. I just didn't see it. This is double bar. This is the site that uh, Sonics were so proficient on, and it seems like we're gonna see a repeat of the last. Two times Sonics went here, which would bring us all the way to the final round. And honestly, I can't believe I was, I was talking about Hookah. It's, it's the same. They are running a similar defense to it regardless. So I, I don't think the point is moot in, in this case either. I mean, you don't have as much utility, sure, because you're not bringing on the side itself, but you're going to have to hold on to it. And three players are put upstairs. Goffy takes a lot of damage, but the Sonics definitely know that this is where they should be pressuring. Grixer keeps on spraying through the soft wall as Forrest will be throwing a few rounds downrange as well. But the beauty of playing this is you can just drop on down and you will have support near you as the round has gone down to his half. Nitro Cell up by Super and it will connect. Grixer is down and Forrest is down as well. Eliminated Sonics with a flawless round. Beautifully played from the Sonics. So I'm a little embarrassed. I was talking about hookah in the uh, prep phase. And it was actually double bar. It's okay. Mom. I was about to say, I wonder why they didn't go to double bar. <laughs> oh, man. No, but we got there. And Sonics managed the win. So we go to the very last round of this map. Where are we going to be going? Obey. They get to decide. Looks like they're settled on billiards. So in the second half, when Obey were defending, billiards was uh, gone to three times and 
Sonics won two of those three. This was the first site that Obey went to. It is their most comfortable, obviously. But Sonics put two rounds together on this site, and it was why Sonics actually managed to push for match point. So this is a big risk for Obey. I can't blame them, though, because the only other site that they managed to win is Kitchen. And they can't go there because they went there in their first round of overtime. So, here we go. Last round, Obey up against the wall on a site that they're not that comfortable on. Sonics trying to bring it back. They've been successful. We go to the last decider. Uh, this is a, this is as close as it gets in terms of uh, matches. But this is the sort of match that makes you say, "Man, I wish they could all just be in pro league." Yeah, yeah. It it, it really is very much heated right now between these two. And honestly, when I saw Obey got the uh, no way on on overtime match point. Oh, I tried to snipe the drone there. At least get something, but Forest will be forced back. I guess the entire strategy with this is, you know what, let's let's just try it. We're gonna go for the Hail Mary. And when I saw that Obey got the <laughs> It's been happening every Can I Can I finish my point, Comfy? Yes, thank you. Continue. Okay. It's like every time it's like, oh, this is funny. <laughs> well when I saw that Obey were starting off with a defense, I I expected this to go to the very final round, mm. and maybe this would be the massive advantage that Obey would have been looking for. I mean, maybe. The, again, the, the, the problem, the dilemma, is that Billiards has not been good to them. I mean, it's been, it's been okay to them, just not great. They've won it once of the three, so this is dangerous. This is dangerous. It's anyone's round, really. And I like that. I like that we get that uh, uncertainty in the final round, the final two minutes of this match. No matter who wins, it all ends here. Those ADSs again. again. I mean, obviously, uh, Obey aren't seeing that. And when they check the VOD, they're going to be like, oh, well, I guess we're positioning those differently in the future. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's that's later. This is now. And now it, those ADSs are not going to help anybody. Well, only a minute 30 here for Sonics to start their attack. You can see that they're going for an Aqua take. Slevin's been doing some great work from below. He set up an angle to deny the cocktail bar pressure. What he could do is deny that plant or that uh, gas canister, denying the plant on default spot. Hmm. Now Sonics are going to spot that uh, there's really nobody inside of Hookah, so there's the potential to go in. You'll still have to be watching for players behind the reinforcements, and to deal what they'll be doing. Goddess setting up here with her Xkyros. As Forest will find the first kill on Slubbin. So now your flank is open if you're the Sonics, but this is how you try to shut down your opponents by using the Xkyros, opening up the sides of the wall by the minibar. And this means that you're gonna have to forfeit this position or get really, really close to the bar itself. There's one player as well watching from above. That was Neptunes on the sledge. So I don't believe that there's anybody playing here by the minibar. And indeed, there is none. Going for you with a pre-fire, but it'll be forced back. As at 30 seconds, this assault has to come down from the Sonics. Habana spraying in, expecting some plays near the end of it, but no, it's all slowing down. Sonics, you got time, you gotta go. Flashbang is out, but it get, gets caught, and that's call out at the right moment. Peeks out, Neptune's coming in as the Diffuser is gonna be set. God is so close to getting the plant down, but call out, we'll find it. Force will get one, but it's Fozo to shut him down. Flawless from Obey Alliance as our first map coastline going all the way to 8-7. That's the way of Obey. Hard fought victory indeed. But that's the new kids on the block fighting back. Okay, so that, hmm. That last round was really interesting. What we saw there from Obey was something we've seen from them in the past. Look at Callout. Oh yeah, I, first of all, let's take a second to highlight Callout's performance. But Neptune wow. and Slevin did a lot of work as well. This Same as Gonfi. You're expecting those. Super and Goddess, not as much because they don't support. play those roles. Yeah, they're support. They're su it's okay when when they're not the top. But yeah, I wanna I wanna talk about that last round because that was something that we've seen a trait in Obey that we've seen highlighted through all of their defensive rounds. Uh, we'll throw up the highlights. Speaking of, while we talk about this, but the the patience 
on the anchors for Obey. That last round, not only patience, but guys, we are playing Coastline. Coastline is one of those maps that you just, you run out of places to hide yep. as a defender. You just can't always be safe. And somehow, some way, Obey are managing to juggle these angles on defense of Coastline constantly, keep themselves alive as anchors long enough to force Sonics to rush as they attack, and then Obey has the advantage. That was the last 20 seconds. And partially, I want to critique Sonics. They're getting down to the last 20 seconds on their attack, and they haven't pushed in. They're not getting any control or any picks. Yeah, some, I want to point a finger at Sonics. But if I look back on that last round, what I noticed is Sonics did a lot of work. Yeah. Setting up angles, trying to get those picks. And Obey just didn't give them any. They just fell back. They kept fell, falling back inch after inch. And at the end, your your Sonics, you don't have any more information to play off of. You're like, okay, let's just go for it. And then call out happens. He, he just goes for those crazy attempts. And I mean, it shows his effect is very much palpable. And for that first map, you ask me, MVP of the game. Oh yeah, no, Kala definitely taking the MVP for map number one. Um, but while at the end there, yes, Kala did put in a lot of work on the on the final round. That round in particular, and a lot of these rounds, what I'm trying to talk about is like, I gotta say, it's just a good team effort from Obey yeah. because it's their persistence, their unwillingness to give away picks on the defense. On the defensive coastline, if you're unfamiliar with CG Sports, if you're just joining us and you're wondering why I keep highlighting, oh, coastline, coastline. This map is just what you just, you run out of places to hide as a defender. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to get picked off. It's about taking those heads of fights, you know, just straight taking it to the attackers. But Obey is doing it differently, and it's really interesting. Um, uh, partially, it is, though, on the side of uh, the Sonics, that that is allowed to happen. Because if I may be blunt, if you are throwing off as an attacking team on that map, there really isn't much the defense can do in terms of persisting, in terms of what Obey has been putting out there in terms of staying alive. Yep. You should be, as an attacking team, able to shut that down. But honestly, it, as you said, in that final round, the Sonics ticked all the boxes. I ticked all, yeah, they did. They opened that everything. final round. They had everything set up for their push. It was all there. But then they lost Slub and I believe, playing the Jackal on the doorway of Hookah. And then yes. your flank was, was over. You couldn't pressure anybody from there. And your attack kind of felt like a limp noodle when pushing it. And once he's gone, you know, the uh, Obey players, they start inching their way back. Because Slebin's not pressuring them from behind anymore. You so recover the ground. They're like, they're like, oh, 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 we're just going to chill over here while you push into the site. Yeah. And then the push comes at 20 seconds left. That's the real kicker there for the Sonics. Not enough time to actually do anything. So that's the play. Obey realized, okay, there's under 20 seconds left. We already eliminated one of them, so that's the flank done. There's nobody coming up blue. We can just focus our efforts on these two locations. Guys, the play there at the end for the Sonics was, okay, guys, all of our effort not working out. What's What do we do? They needed to rush. They needed to rush in as a team, refrag each other, go for kills. That was the only option. Yep. They had no other choice. There was too much denial on the side of Obey. There was too much potential to delay with 20 seconds left. Um, but Sonics didn't do that. Why? Probably because of the pressure of it being overtime match point. Yep. I mean, and God, the relegations. This is careers being made and careers being destroyed here today. So I understand why the Sonics didn't do that. You can't really fault them for it. Anyway, we're getting on to map number two, and uh, it's going to be Cafe. Yeah, and w we said in the beginning, if Obey Tech map one, then it's very doable for them to... I mean, map three. To take it, you know, take it back. Yeah. So, so they can make it 2-0, they can go to a map three, and then have some sort of pressure if Sonics end up winning Cafe. So this is a highly technical map. There's a lot of work. This is very similar to Coastline, the way where there's a lot of top floor destruction that can be done pretty much on every single floor. You have to watch out for the floorboards, sledge, breaching charges, buck, all of these things, massive when it comes to what's available. And the Thermite's gonna be the first band. Sonics fire back with a Thatcher man. Oh. This is gonna be just a mess trying to breach. And now my conversation about Soft destruction is going to be twice as important because you won't have the flexibility. You need to fight from below if you want to destroy any utility. And I expect Mozzie mute combos to come out to deal with any Twitch drones that might be in play. There's the Echo Ban. I expect the Mira maybe to do the second one unless something crazy. No, there you go. Expected the Echo and the Mira. So mute Mozzie 
it, it has to happen. This is a signature map for Mozzie specifically. We've seen it in every region. I think Joystick has shown everybody in EU how strong Mozzie is on this map specifically if you combo, given the fact now that there's only two, there's two hard breachers available, you're going to need that Maverick. Like, need is the word for it. Yeah. Well, Maverick's definitely going to be important. Habana is going to be the most important. You can do this map without a Thermite and a Thatcher, but... <sighs> it's it's very difficult. You don't want to do this map without a Thermite and a Thatcher. Here's the interesting thing. Sonics are, so far, not six-picking the Maverick in. So, what that's going to mean is it's unlikely, considering the Kaede is in play, it's unlikely that we okay, will see the uh, back bar storage wall get opened up. Because um, the Kaede electric cars are going to go on that wall, and... They're either going to go downstairs or they're going to go up high. So, see the wall that Callout is reinforcing right now? That's where the Electric Claws are likely to go. Now, you can either put them at the top of the reinforcement. That means that the skylight on the ceiling slash roof for the defender, for the attackers, the skylight can't see the Electric Claw if it's placed high on that wall, so it can't be shot from this skylight. Or you're going to go down under the wall and put it low so under the floor so that the attackers have to clear underneath to get to it. That would make it even harder because then nades can't destroy it from the skylight. In this case, they're going to be putting it, it looks like high on the wall. That's fine. It's the easier way and it's less exposed to potential clear downstairs, but it is also then exposed to the nades from the skylight. So, Obey will probably put an ADS to cover the electric claw. Yep. Now the point I'm trying to get at here is why is all this relevant? Well, it's very relevant because of Thatcher being banned. That's it. Like, he's banned, so the wall is gonna be really hard to open because the electric claw is going to be really hard to destroy. Yeah, and you want to—you can double down. You can put in a mute as well. It combos really well in two ways on this map, specifically because of the operator bands plus having the mozzie and the cod in play, and because they're electro claws, it's so much more difficult to snipe them off from below. This is why I was saying Maverick is going to be near to a must on this because this is all it takes. Cod will just throw. Every, like, throw a wrench in any plan that you have set for any site, really, when it comes to Café Dostoevsky. Gonfi opening up those uh, drop-downs, and it's just a pretty standard take so far from Sonics. You'll note, guys, that uh, it usually takes, uh, for an efficient team, about 40 seconds to get your attackers onto the roof. For a decently, or like, a average team, one minute to get your attackers onto the roof. Oh! Fozo, beautiful Nitro. Oh, he's going to be blasting that player up to the roof. And Super, though, will be finding Abu Nai. So taking down the Jaeger. Scottis will be dropping in in support. Super watching out for any rotations, any drops outside of the windows here on the eastern side of the map. But it's a Nomad, and all air jabs have been set down. This might be assault from the windows to push in with pressure from Piano. But taking down the, the slub in there is really going to slow things down. And you don't have the soft breach, so where's the sludge? Is he anywhere nearby? You're going to need him to open an extra hole to come in from the bathroom. The sludge is all the way up, though, setting up frag grenades later on the round, probably. Take a look at that, guys. The electrocos persist. The wall's still electrocuted. And you'll note the electrocos are actually placed in a slightly destroyed top part of the wall. Now, what that means is they can be shot from piano, but the attackers have to know that they exist there. What it also means is explosives thrown into freezer or back bar storage will not destroy the electroclaw as easily. They can still, but it's unlikely. So that is a risk that the defenders have taken, but that also, again, means once the electroclaw's position is known, it can easily be shot by any attacker. Well, Super now on the repel. This is why he's here, and this is why he had his utility pre-placed. And Super finds a kill. Got us with another one on two forest. Nitro Cell used up by a Grixer, but it will not connect. Little time left. There's we go. That's Nitro Cell being used. Close to dropping Gumpy there, but Fozo, beautiful play at long range. He'll get one kill. It's the headshot. The fuser has been placed. Neptune's beautiful play here. The SMG 11 to take down Fozo's Grixer on his own versus three. The headshot on the Gumpy. And now, what are you looking for if you're the Sonics to get the hell out of this building? Play on the reverse repel by the windows. That's really the only way for you to solidify your position, but no, both players will be sitting down here on the main floor. Goes in, but there's two players watching the advances. Got it, so we'll find Grixer. And all facilitated thanks to Super's entry. First kill, 
and then the follow-up as he entered, vaulting in by the window. That was the playmaker. Good job there to Super. Good job to Sonics for the win. Obey. Their fallback position in that round was the top of White Stairs, and they didn't have enough of a hold on to Cocktail, which is so important when you're defending on this map. And, well, as soon as they lost Cocktail, effectively at that point, you can't push back up the top of White Stairs, and those players had to go into Piano. Now, Piano is a, as a position to retake. Remember when I was talking about those long angles on Coastline and how... It's hard to play Kitchen as a retake site because of the long angles the attackers can establish. Well, that is also true when you're trying to retake from Piano onto Cocktail, especially considering all of the destruction that had played out through that round. And you saw at the end there, those last two defenders in Piano, they're struggling with the angles. They're struggling to take the fights because they're losing out to the attacker's advantage of the range. It happens. Really, the, uh, the problem isn't necessarily the range. That's something you need to work around. That's just a that's a part of the game, right? And you could just take those long range fights. It's doable as a defender. I'm Five not saying that left. you can't. What I am saying is that usually you hold on to cocktail so that you don't have to think about it. It doesn't come to that. But yeah, you're you're right. It's those entry frags that uh, Sonic's managed to get. Good picks there on cocktail. I'm just surprised to see how slow Obey were re to reacting to that uh, loss of control. Yeah, their reaction was, let's double up with another Night to Herself from the Mozzie, but it really was not the play. I like the way that even without having the required hard breach and the ways to deal with the, the COD, it still worked out well for the Sonics. I mean, they were able to push in deep, didn't even need the repel, they just planted, and they were very happy with the way that things went down on bar. Super will go for the very same position as he was in before here by the eastern wall and he can set up to go into pillars in just a bit if that is even the plan lie down for a bit go chill drone around and make sure you know where your opponents are before you assault in force covering here with the default cam to give his teammate the mozzie grixer a bit of space as he just sets up inside of reading remember we talked about so much soft breach that's going to be important on this map well, you have a ton of it available for the Sonics here in the Sledge. That Jackal and the Zofia with the Breaching Charges. Yeah, can open up a lot, but Abu Nai will find Slubbin and eliminates the Jackal. The Hunter becomes the, or the Hunted becomes the Hunter. In this case, Neptunes from above will finish off Abu Nai, but not before Super. He's taken a decent chunk of damage himself. So, one of the roamers dealt with, but you can see Grixer up in White Hallway is going to be trying to do some work. He'll move into the bathroom, positioning himself well. Call out eliminated, and again, we've talked about how, oh, he hears the enemy, and he gets the easy kill. Neptune's executed from behind. Grixer with the drop, and he'll get his second. Beautiful gunplay and positioning from Grixer. The third oh. is in, what a down! He doesn't seem to know he's done it, but the C4 comes out. And there it is, the finish off on Super. Just goddess now on the attack. And she is pushing her way into sight with the watch there from the mute of Fozo. Obey will take a round. Beautiful job there from oh that, that was just, that's as cash money of a flank as you'd love it to be. Yeah, you're talking about rounds that scream, we deserve to be in Pro League. That's one of them there from Grixer. We've seen amazing performances from Grixer today, from Callout, we've seen uh, from Abu Nai. Yeah, actually, even even Forrest has had his big moments and yeah. Fozo as well. So it's just been it's been a really big day for Obey. Now, not to degrade the Sonics because they've also had their moments. Now, see if they can. Uh, Need to locate Push it here on their map. A reminder, yeah, this is the Sonic's map, so it is very important that they win this one. In that, uh, well, Obey took map number one, of course, but also because that would be, well, it would be <laughs> true proof that Obey deserves the spot if they were to win here on Sonic's map. Now, 
we'll be going back to the top floor here for Obey Alliance. A reminder, Cafe is a defender-sided map, as is pretty common, but this is an exceptionally defender-sided one. Because the, uh, I guess, left. because it's a new map, it's usually how it works out. And once the meta is sufficiently evolved, you'll see that kind of shift away, and we'll get to that point at some point uh, later down the line. But that usually takes years. What I liked is that that was a kitchen defense that was successful, which is kind of a hit or miss. Oh, I kind of like kitchen. Oh, it was in terms of in terms of like when the defense is actually able to take it. It's something yeah. like 40, 60. something like that. I, I'm not really sure. I don't have the stats in front of me. But what I will say is most of the defending, and this might be why they were successful. Most of the defending was not even on the kitchen. Yep. So it it was just the beautiful flank, unexpected, to have the Mozzie run up the stairs. We've seen the Sonic struggle with their information gathering before. That is true. Quite a lot actually. But it was. B before we saw it later in the round, not really in in really the middle of it, where they are mostly on top of things. I mean, even the the um, sledge in that location was droning. He he was checking everything. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, it was a bit closer than he had expected. But now, in this bar take, the Sonics will drop down. They have a lot of time for this, and it doesn't seem like there's anything from Obey that is prepared to stop their entries into. Uh, well, through any of those reinforced walls, so you won't be you have to cut it. That's it. Nothing more that was added as we saw a couple of rounds ago. Confi will take down a maestro camera here and the default cam as well. Drones are sailing all over the place, and the COD is trying to slow things down in his own way. Now, I'm not sure where the electric claw was set. Maybe it's in the same position as before. We'll see in just a second once we get there. Go and no, it is directly on the wall. It seems mm -hmm. it's at the top and directly at the wall. I think. Or, no, no, it might be below. It's not at the same spot. Yeah, it's I, well, whatever it is, it's definitely proving to be a problem for the Sonics as they cannot destroy it. I believe it's below because I I need glasses and I don't have them, so I'm, my eyesight's terrible. But I can't see it on that wall. Well. Only time will tell, I guess, at this point. Is there any... I, I, there's no way to look through it anyways. Grixer will still find Slubbin. And there's Neptunes downed as well, right at the entry. There's a lot of time being wasted here, and Neptunes will be picked up 20 HP. Big losses as the Habana is forced to enter through the sidewalk onto the bar. Foes on the clock, it will eliminate the drone as this time they're still awaiting Super to dive on in, but I assume Obey are ready for it. And you see... Even the maestro has turned his eyes towards that, uh, that window. Grenade will be lobbed in and will do just a bit of damage to the maestro and Neptune's missing the shot, but Super will not. His four is taken away. Call out though, hitting the kill onto Gomfi. Call out finding another one on the god as his Grixer takes down Super and this call out with a 3k on Neptune to take him out at least a 3k here in the retake. I'm not sure if he got one before. But here we are, a lot of damage, and as you said in map one, if Call It's alive, it's winnable. Absolutely. Big round there from Call Out and the rest of Obey really earning that one. It was looking pretty dangerous for a while because of the setup we saw from the Sonics. Now, this has been the story for this whole match, and it's much the same as what we were seeing on coast, uh, Coastline earlier. Big difference is Cafe, there's more places for the defenders to hide. But anyway, the story is this. We see Sonic's set up angles, crossfires, and just really waiting for kills to walk into these angles and gain an advantage for the Sonics on the attack. That's what they're doing, and they keep attack trying to lean into this. So long. much so that they leave it to the dying seconds of the round before they even start pushing the site. So that's that's rough for sure if 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 you're the Sonics when none of that works. And the reason it's rough is because Obey aren't letting it work. They're just not walking into the angles that would give them away, that would let them get picked off. It's a really good way to play to counter Sonic's playstyle is how Obey's doing it. It's, it's just patience. You gotta get you gotta applaud Obey for always having that safe space to avoid getting uh getting eliminated on those angles that Sonics keep setting up. You also got to point a finger at Sonics and say, hey, maybe change what you're doing here. It's weird because, I mean, this is typical Siege, right? Yeah. When you're a defender, a big part of the game is just, hey, you need to persist. You need to stay safe on your angles. 
attacker, you need to open up more angles using your destruction and try to pick off the defenders who are trying to stay safe. It's really, really basic stuff. Cat and mouse. Um, now Bayer just playing that cat and mouse game a little bit better. Only ever so slightly, though. Yeah. By the way, that was an update to the uh, community vote. We're at 55% in favor of Obey now. Yeah, so uh, right now what we're doing is at the end of every uh, every map, we have an updated vote, and I'm not sure why. Did they update that? Because I keep seeing that happen where the air jab goes on the window. Yeah, I don't know, because that didn't work before. It, uh, I don't yeah. know if there was anything changed in the past. Please feel free to let us know, but. Yeah, correct us if we're wrong, but last we checked. Last we checked, it did not change. Air jabs do not detonate mid-air. Yep. Last we checked, it it did it only detonates if your feet are firmly on, on the, the floor yeah. as a defender, and that's when it pops. So that would actually be completely ineffective. If th something has changed in the past couple of weeks, please let us know. I'm playing extensively, and I don't know if that actually would change. I but don't know either. That aside, Neptunes will find Abu Nai. He takes a bit of damage, but the Jaeger off the board. Good start here for the Sonics. Yep, that's cocktail control, and they can turn that into much much more moving forward. Maybe we're both really dumb and it's yeah, it, it's so, it, it, it's completely fine. <laughs> we don't know. Us. But that's why we're asking because I, I don't believe that there was any talk about it when it actually happened. Usually there is conversations around these things. That said, Nitro Cell has been used and it will not connect. Rixer might be pushed here and there's the sludge that opens up the castle barricade. Unfortunately, that's two players doubling up on Grixer and he will be shot down. Drones downstairs uh, by the pillars will give away the position of that castle. And the shotgun set on the staircase, very difficult position to push through, and that's call out. So we've seen the amount of work that he can do. But because you have top floor control, Sonics can afford to kind of use the next 15 or so seconds to prepare for their assault and call out. And he's trying to lure them into a false sense of comfort. It's the waiting game here, ladies and gentlemen. Obey are really good at this. And they do have a two-man disadvantage, but that is going to be a one-man disadvantage as Call Out peeks on the Slebin and wins the fight. 22 seconds left for the Sonics to make their attack happen. We've seen this time and time again go the way of Obey, but Super's not going to have any of that Second this left. time as Fozo goes down to his bullets. Forrest in his sight gets one, make that oh. two. Can he get the third? Looks like he might be able to as it's got a stranded, beautiful pistol play and a 4K! What a clutch from Forrest! Obey! Big rounds here. <laughs> oh, here's the good night coming out. That rush was just not working out at all. Beautiful play with the UMP. And just time perfectly shot after shot as Obey collect yet another round here on the defense. There's the replay for you guys. Check it out. There's Forrest with one. Forrest with two as he drops it. And now pulls out the pistol. Still had four. It's in the magazine. Found one, and they doubled up. It was so close. Neptunes could have gotten both of them. Yeah. But final bullet will connect with the Colt 45. And there you go. From the hip, the you got some. <sighs> one magazine, two kills. Man, that... You don't see that. With a UMP? Uh, with, well, two kills with the UMP, then two kills with the 45. With, yeah, that's, that's pretty freaking good. That's impressive. So Obey now at 3-1. Should they get one more round, they'll be sitting very pretty when it comes to Café Dostoevsky. It's impressive for Forrest. It's Bomb also really, really amazingly bad for yes. the Sonics. They messed it up. How? Goddess and then Neptunes. How? Man. I mean, we've seen Neptunes. Be, he's, his, his aim has been a little shaky today. But, you know... It's a today to thing because we do know. I mean, every, Neptune's is a really nutty shot. He has yeah, amazing moments, so it's a today thing for sure. But today of all days to be not hitting that shot. I mean, man, Forrest was in a sprint. He was in the middle of a sprint animation when he got the engagement when Neptune peaked him. Ah, he can't fight back there. All right, all right, moving on. So, that's three rounds in a row for Obey, guys. That's huge. Oh. Rough one for Sonics right now on their map. Of course, it is Obey on the defense. Hey, the air jab's on the right side this time. I I really... Uh, I, I'm going to... You know what? I'm 
when I get home. Because I'm sure people will tell us, but when I get home, I'm going to go test it myself. Yes. Just to be sure. I'm, I'm waiting because there's the delay on the stream. Yeah. But I'm waiting for the... Everyone to start telling us. Yeah, for the tweets well, and everything. That's the thing is because I've found that there's actually... there's, You know, not everyone actually knows, so a lot of people will say what they don't. So, I'm, like I said, I'm going to wait till I get home and I'm going to yes, test it. That's, that's a very good way to do it. Well, so, you think someone would do that? Go on the internet and spread lies? Oh, you're right. You're right, Gasan. No one does that. No one does that ever. That's yeah, just, I'm being silly. Yes. All right. So, Sonics, top floor control. They're not certain about that course because of Vigil's ability. They're going to be looking for anybody. That, I think, yeah, at this point, they're confident. So, top floor control, they can use this now to start pushing down. Now, of course, this is going to be a kitchen defense. A reminder, we saw a full cycle, three rounds in a row from Obey, and that means they have to go back to their first site, being kitchen. Yeah. They made it happen on the main three. Of course, nobody plays um, in train. No, it's just... Yeah, it's just an unplayed site. No, when you have reading. And, oh, no checking. Plus, the ERC was activated. And there's the SMG-12 being played as well. There's support from the Mozzie, so Grixer is here. Oh. Abunai crossing, and he stays alive. The grenade right in front of him, and it will barely do any damage. He's going to get pressured as well from above. Will there be a drop? It seems oh. like it. Oh, he snap aims, but Gomfi is already there. Grixer, though, will find one kill. They're trying to push him. There's the Nitro Cell coming out. It will detonate, but it will not hit. And as Grixer went for the ADS, it's Gomfi to take him out. Obey Alliance waste so much time and take two players out for their two own, but there's 25 seconds left. This is all completely worth it right now for Obey, and they still have three massive operators on the board. Gomfi is in. He still has one more stun yeah, Gajmot to, to, to be used, but there's 12 seconds left, and all of these rifles on, are trailed at the one entryway. You go in for the pre-fire. That's one kill. Two kills for Forrest. With the oh. odd three for Forrest. He's collecting them all. And my god, Forrest Gump has got a new set of legs here, and he is firing on all cylinders. Forrest with the big plays through this map. That's two rounds in a row on his back. Great job there holding down that doorway. We'll see a replay of that real quick. That drop on the floor was beautiful. Yeah, the timing on it really worked out for him because I don't think that Sonics were expecting him to get aggressive and wide peek this. You can see just two heads up fights there. One, no headshots, yep. mind you. The last one is a headshot, but no headshots with an ARG. That is a slow to kill weapon. And he still manages to win that. And. You saw Goddess at the end, she corrected to try and fight him as he was in his previous position. But? But he already dropped to the floor. Mm -hmm. If it was planned or not, it Attack doesn't matter. He just dropped bomb. on the floor, he played it, and even if he had died to Goddess's fire, there was still the bandit on the other side in support. And there was still a third player as well waiting to catch that refrag, and the odds were stacked against Sonics. Time-wise, they messed it up real bad. Here's the thing. <sighs> yes, defense of Cafe. Advantage to the defenders. Sure. But these rounds, the way that they've been playing out, I mean, these are some devastating losses for the Sonics. That last round, I was about to make note of this. Gonfi got two big kills there. He confidently took those fights and he took it to the enemy. He was like, I'm going to win this period. Really big play there from Gonfi, taking those two kills. But yes, it was at the very end of the round and he probably should have done it sooner, maybe. But whatever. He won the fights and he did it by himself. Oh, well, no. Okay. Decent amount of support on both of them. Fine. Pressure from his teammates. But he took the heads of fight and he won them. And, and that's really big because we haven't been seeing a lot of that from the Sonics today. Uh, so credit to Gonfi. And I was going to say, you know, pressure's on him. He, he transferred regions coming from Europe to North America to play on this team. And he, he really doesn't want it to be a relegation situation. And honestly, these are two players that came from Sisu that was relegated. Yeah. It, I mean, no matter how you cut it. You could say, I mean, I agree, I agree with you. It was... Sink and ship, but you don't want to jump from one to another. Now that's not obviously not the intention here for the Sonic. So 
No, definitely There's a not. lot. I, I think Gonfi and Slevin have a lot that they're fighting for here, but not just them, but the rest of the team. Everyone is motivated to not get relegated here. And yet, again, I'll say it, those last four rounds in a row there from Obey, those are devastating losses for the Sonics. Indeed. Those are hard hitters, man. They are going to have to really bounce back on the second half. Look, if Obey get one more round here, this is not going to look pretty on the second half, but I really hope that Sonics have a lot in store, of us, in store for us on their defense. Grixer, though, will start off by rattling down Gomfi. Beautiful play here to take down the Zofia. No more stuns available. That angle that Grixer's using right now was used the last time Obey were on this top floor defense to great effect. It did a lot of damage, and he's doing it again. Sonic's not aware of this, losing a player early on. That is such a tight angle to deal with. Neptunes finally will come in and spot the Maestro, Forrest, who's kind of crouched for just a moment. Electrocaught dealt with. That's big. It means the wall will get opened up, which is it advantage to Sonics, but we've seen how Obey have managed to avoid being exposed to those angles before. They're trying to stay up on the tables. Forrest will find one more on Super, and that's that's the opening. Super was the playmaker before, twice, even though the second round was not won. Now with three players, full HP, they'll be able to find Slub Forrest here with Slubbin. Slubbin for oh. another one on a Fozo. He's hitting hard, and there's three players left for Obey. Less than 30 seconds in, and there's a shotgun watching any push through the freezer. This is the same spot you said it before, and Grixer will collect a second kill for himself in the round. Neptune's trying to push in here by the bar. Call it is flashed, but it's Grixer to save the day. He gets one kill on Neptune's, and Albunai in the meantime will recover as the smoke turns back. Five rounds now in a row, and on the defense for Obey Alliance. They are two away from Pro League. Boy, oh boy. Sonics have to show us something incredible here to bounce it back. A brief reminder, this is Sonic's map. They should be taking it to obey, and for a while in the first half, it looked like they would. My god, I thought Sonic's on their attacks were looking lethal, were looking strong. I The coordination was, was really good. And then something started to happen. Obey, they started to clutch up. Round after round, clutch after clutch, individual um, performance after individual performance, just standing above the rest on Obey's side. And it's starting to spiral out of control here for the Sonics. It should be a much closer match right now. Really, it should be. But Sonics are just not giving it all, and, and Obey certainly are. They're, they're putting in every single effort. You could see how hyped up they are. Yeah. In their in their play. And you know the round ends and they start shaking their mouths. I don't think that's BMing. I think they're just really excited. I think they the are adrenaline's excited. rushing through their system. Can you blame them? After no, I cannot. After after a few weeks of playing Challenger League, everything just uh, put together. Yeah, there's a D at the end of tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay toned. That's stay tuned, guys. I think what they're trying to say is stay toned. Because we might find out that Obey is in Pro League if you just stay tuned for the next two rounds. Two more rounds. Maybe they win it. But now Sonics are on the defense. And they go for that Mozzie Mute combo, which is oh so strong in general. But on top of that, this is Cafe Dostoevsky. It's tough to deal with things like this. Now, on the one hand, there is no cotton. So this makes things a bit easier for Obey as Mute Jammers are a lot easier to spot and somewhat easier to deal with, but they will block your drones. And that's the big deal. Combo that with the Mozzie, you're gonna have a hard time lodging or dislodging your opponents from their positions. There we go, you stop them. You don't know where they're coming from and Obey will, might have to take more direct gunfights in this. No. Yeah. Now, okay, reminder. This is second half. Obey now on attack. Yep. So this is where Sonics have the platform to bounce back. It's very doable. But it just doesn't seem especially likely given the way that these rounds have been won by Obey. Now, it'll be a attack onto the top floor to start things, of course. Um, Got to deal with those players and Cocktail. One thing to note here is how quickly... That back bar storage wall got opened up. That was really fast into the round. The second Xcaros probably stopped by a Mew Jammer. Yep. Uh, which is why it's not being detonated on the bathroom. And you can see that there's actually a player there trying to hold on to bathroom. Very powerful position. Super is going to have to be a big playmaker for his team if uh, they want to win this one. 
He's got assistance on the white hallway. Someone's holding him from white stairs, but it's a rush from Obey. Abu Nais all the way in. He's in his own teammate's fire, but he'll get a kill onto the Maestro of Goddess. And the plant's even going down meanwhile, while Grixer and Fozo are getting kills elsewhere. That's a pistol kill for Grixer. It's just Gomfi, and he has no chance. Obey Alliance! Oh my god. On match point, series point, pro league point, just one away. Chat room, everybody watching at home will tell you right now. And spoiler alert for people that haven't watched EU. There's your warning. Now, in EU, two Pro League teams, previously Pro League teams, were knocked down to CL. Sisu and Penta Sports. Two big names when it comes to EU Pro League. We had BDS and Force coming into PL in Europe. Right now, Two teams are fighting for their spots in North America. Coming into this, it was pretty much a halfway divide between Obey and Sonics. That's what you guys were saying at home. Obey are running away with this on Sonics's map after a super tight coastline as map one. Best of three series favoring the underdog. Oddly enough, usually it's not the case. And the Sonics now... If they lose any round, it's over. Obey have five rounds of flexibility, and that's when it comes to regulation time, not even counting over time, but they'll have two extra rounds on top of that. There's so much flexibility right now for Obey Alliance that the only way for them to lose this game is by literally all disconnecting and not coming back. Five seconds remaining. Well... The moment is dire right now. The fate is almost sealed here. Yeah. Uh, I I did not expect it to be like this after map number one. But if I were to venture a guess, I'd say that Sonics are just discouraged. And it's hard not to be. At this point, Forest and Callout have been performing excellently for the team. Everybody has been. I mean, everybody's been Grixer, Grixer. I, I've, I, we've seen amazing plays from everyone on Obey, even even Fozo. He's been really contributing in terms of just like getting those kills on the entry. Everybody putting in the work. Mm -hmm. And again, I said it in the map number one, and I'll say it here on map number two. These are the types of plays. These are the types of performances where you look at him and you go, we deserve to be in Pro League. Pro League material, that's what you're looking for. Oh, quick peek out here as Neptunes almost gets his head chopped off by the Zofia of Abu Nai, but it'll be saved. He'll run back for just a moment, and Fozo will be setting up here by the cigar hatch again. Unable to catch the Jaeger off, at least for now. Grixer putting a lot of pressure from below. And that's what you're looking for. Make sure you have everybody running for the hills as you pressure the defenders more and more. That that Jaeger's position is just so compromised. And Grixer is, well, he can he can just spend the entire round playing from here, basically. Yeah, he's doing a lot of work. Neptune's gonna drop down to try and stop him, but Abu Nai is there to catch Neptune, say, night night, and no, you cannot deny my buck opening below your anchors. Sonic's now feeling a mountain of pressure as Obey continued to apply vertical pressure from the bottom. Grixer is looking for the shoddy kill. He gets a couple shots into his body from Goddess on the castle. But that's call out to find it. There's two players doubled up here on the window. Forrest is ready to use his crossbow bolts. And Abunai goes up. He gets uh, taken off, though, by Gonfi. It's 4v3 now. His call it is low in HP as well. But that's super to find Fozo. Oh. The openings are coming back here for the Sonics. And it's a 3v3. Gonfi will heal himself back up to around half HP. And all the utilities being used up by the Capital, but Grixer finds Gomfi, and that might be the opening. The Diffuser will be set. All player in the back spotted, but Slevin is down. He already got the kill on Call It. It's all on Super. The big team captain now. Can he pull it back? Grixer at half HP. Oh. Super finds one headshot, but he's taken no. away. It's all no. over. Not no. by the tracks. No. That's how it happens. Stop no. that in his tracks, literally. And that's how it goes down. Congratulations, Obey Alliance knocked down the Sonics to 7 1 on map two. And Cafe Dostoevsky is done. Welcome, Obey. Back to Pro League. Sonics, commiserations. But you're going to have to fight through Challenger League for next season.
Well, truly congratulations to Obey, a pro league performance to get the 7-1 over Sonics. I, that's impressive. All right, that last round even, look at the strat they pulled out on that last round. They put Abu Nayan pillars to watch for the drop down, which is expected. Neptune's drops, free kill. Then they had the buck doing so much work in reading, opening up from below, forcing the anchors to move. And then what happens? Those anchors move, goddess moves, and somebody on Repel catches her before she can get to another safe space. Remember when I was saying how the Sonics kept opening up angles. They kept holding themselves on those angles, and then nothing happened. No kills came of it. It's because they weren't forcing the defenders to move exactly. like Obey just did in that round. I mm. Collecting kills is not just about watching an angle. Or it's setting up an abundance of angles. Yeah, in professional play, that's not how it's done. You won't just get peaked randomly like that with no info, no nothing. And so, Obey are now a pro league team. Congratulations. Sonics, Sonics no longer. Obey Alliance, welcome back to pro league. We saw them a year ago drop down, mm -hmm. and now they come back with a completely different squad. Pretty much rookies that make their way into pro league. Yeah, that's a big thing. Uh, uh, this is really big because, okay, you look at European Challenger League. We see those two teams push in. Great job to them. Uh, but most of those players, Old school players, yes. you know, re returning players. Here, I got call, I, I don't think any of these guys have been in pro oh. league. This is an, a really big injection of new talent into the North American pro league scene. And now the big question is, will they be able to stay at a pro league level? Because we've seen we've seen the new North American teams come in before and just falter, drop out immediately. You know, every bit somebody goes on Reddit and posts a thread saying, is it too late for me to join and play competitively in Rainbow Six to get to Pro League? Nope. All these relegations prove to you that it's not over yet. There's always going to be new blood. Every single team is getting new blood back into it. And this is this is how it's being done. It's not over. If you have the skill, you'll be able to make it. We have our interview though, Michael. So. We'll be back in just a few minutes to talk to you. But for now, let's have a quick chat. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Hello. I, it says Hello. It, I, you can't see it on your side, but in the interview, it says interview Obey Alliance with Super. <laughs> That's it. So you already Hi, switched Super. to our team. You already <laughs> switched to our team. <laughs> How's it going, Super? They're confusing all the sets. There's three of us. They can't keep us in, in line. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are. Congratulations on your victory. Welcome to Pro League. Again, this is you guys' first time competing at this highest level of play, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. And uh, a lot of these guys, I think uh, all four of my teammates, uh, this is their first time in CL. Um, I was the only one that came with CL experience, mm -hmm. which um, wasn't very hot CL's experience, but um, everybody else is brand new to CL and Pro League. And you guys just suddenly make it into Pro League. A lot of people were looking into this that, you know, usually North America, there's not a lot of shakeup between CL and Pro League teams. It'll happen every now and then, but it's not something you can rely on consistently like in the EU. Now for you guys, how was your trek through Challenger League and being signed on to Obey Alliance, having an org behind you, and how did that help you to, to get your way and your foot literally bashing through the door into PL? Um. I know that these guys have been grinding for like ever. They've been a team, uh, the Chords has been a team for nine months. Um, I joined when we got into Challenger League and we just grinded. Um, I, I think we just put in the most amount of work out of NACO and we just made sure that we got it done and it's just been grind, 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 never stop. And with the org support, it just helps 10 times more. Yeah, it really does show. Now I have to say, everybody was really showing up on the team. It was a concise team effort, which is what you need when you're heading into professional play. How is how is your communication like? Because the first time, as you said, playing on this high level uh, of play and being able to keep the comms relaxed and free flowing is usually a difficult thing for, and there's no other way around it, a rookie team coming into this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's definitely probably was one of our main issues and main concerns coming into Challenger League. And that's just what we've been like pounding on to just get it better and better and better. And it's just gotten 10 times better. Like today, it just felt so fluid. Everything was just, we were firing on all pistons. Yeah. Everything was just there. Well, I mean, Abunai, you, you, you guys were doing fantastically. Call out was very present. Everybody was present on the team. At the end of this, you've made it to Pro League 
anything you'd like to say to uh, all the fans that followed you through Challenger League and the new ones that you hope to acquire over Season 11? I just want to say thanks for the support, and it's this, it's still even surreal to even think that uh, we made it this far. It's going to take me a day or two to even uh, really acknowledge it, but just thanks to all the fans, and just thanks for all the massive support. It helps a ton. It helps a lot more than people think. All right, Abunai, thank you very, very much, and congratulations on making your way into Pro League. We can't wait to see you playing in Season 11, so hey, in just a couple months, we'll be seeing you in play. That sounds thank pretty you. fucking cool, if you yep. ask me. Yeah, it does, it does. Bye -bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye.